Welcome everyone. Uh, this is Rachel Rose Little Crow and uh, this evening I have the honor and the pleasure of spending time with Shamit Horsfield uh, who is a beautiful and sacred embodiment of the priestess and the goddess. About two years ago Shamit had the vision of the wake the Awaken the Goddess Within Summit. And through this inspiration, she has gathered some of the most beautiful, creative, loving and evolutionary minds in the spiritual and transformational community uh, to come forward in this great act of service, which is the Awaken the Goddess Within Summit. Um, uh, I've had the pleasure of spending quite a bit of time with Shamat, and I can tell you that her greatest fulfillment and deepest pleasure is to support others in connecting to and finding their soul path and destiny. Um, and she gives this loving service to the world. So on behalf of all the contributors to the Awaken the Goddess Within Summit, Shamat, we would like to thank you for gathering us and to welcome you into your time of sharing. Welcome, Shamat. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you for that introduction. And thank oh, you no, for being no. part of this summit. Such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know that you've done so many interviews and, and asked these questions again and again. Um, so now it's time. And I'm so excited. <laughs> so Shamat, please tell us, what does the goddess mean to you? Wow, it feels very interesting to be on the other side. <laughs> it's such a big question. It's such an enormous question. Um, and it means everything that everyone has said. But I'll speak for my own journey. When I found, about, found out about God and connecting in with God, I had an incredible journey. My, my mom and dad were not religious. Religion was not something that was forced on me. It, it was actually me that was a seeker as a little girl. I started going to a, Mer a Mormon church in Utah and I would have been seven or eight years old. It was my choice. My family didn't go, but I was looking, I was searching, I was seeking for answers to find out what and why we were here. And I knew when I was a little girl that I was here for a reason. I knew that I had come here to planet Earth to create change. I just, I knew this, you know, at such a young age. And so, you know, I explored lots of different religions, Mormon, Pentecostal, Baptist. Um, I spoke in tongues. I went to Sunday school. I even at one point at 15 years old dressed up like a clown and taught uh, Sunday school to all the kids that had come from, uh, you know, dysfunctional families that were having a hard time. We have a school bus and go and pick up all the kids and take them to the church and teach them about love. And I loved it. I loved it so much. You know, I was, I was that 15 year old that was in silent reading class, reading my Bible and going to church three times a week because I wanted to. And I really loved the community aspect. I loved um, making a difference. We would go and sing some uh, in a choir called Something Higher to, um, to all the inmates that were in jail. And I loved being able to connect in with people's hearts and bring out the love, bring out the best in people. And so that was my, I know that's not answering the goddess question, but 
I found the goddess through my connection to finding God, you know, to that activation of something higher, something beyond what I could understand. And, you know, with church and with God, this is where it, it, it like, it didn't make sense to me. The church told me I couldn't go to concerts. The church told me I couldn't have my nose pierced. There were certain things that then I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. They told me that crystals were bad and evil. And I thought, what? Hang on. Crystals are in the earth. Like they're part of the earth. So how? I don't understand why that is wrong. And so I then I started to question the church. And, you know, I remember asking the, pri the, the priest, why is it bad for me to have my nose pierced? All the women in India have their nose pierced. You know, I, I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense to me. And, and, and I left the church because there were no answers to my questions. And that was when I found the goddess. And the goddess made so much sense to me. You know, it was like, the God was out there, like some God on some throne watching over us all or, you know, something like, and then the goddess was like the connection to the earth and the connection to myself and the connection of love and nurturing. And that made so much sense to me. And so, I instantly knew, like, I am a goddess because I am part of the earth and the earth is part of me and that I'm connected to the universe and the cosmos and to each and every human being. And to me, you know, the goddess is love. The goddess is connection. The goddess to me is accessible and yeah, that's why I say awaken the goddess within is it's it's connecting in to no matter how different each and every one of us are, we're all connected through love. And so for me, the goddess is really that unification, you know, and when I became a mother, you know, when I had my two boys, that was a huge awakening to the goddess because when you have children, there's this unconditional love of a mother that is birthed. And then you realize that connection of being a creator and, and that unconditional love for these brand new little beings that are in the world. And that I would say, you know, becoming a mother really opened me up in a whole new level of love and awakening within and connecting in with my own inner goddess and the goddess within each human being as well. So it's the connection to each other. It's a connection to love. It's the connection to this great, beautiful mother earth. Yeah. It's a lot of things and I could probably talk for the whole hour just about that, but <laughs> I'll let you ask the next question. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. So then I, I think I'm really interested for you to speak about the priestess then. What does the priestess mean for you, Shamed? Yeah, yeah, that's also a very, they're all big questions, aren't they? The priestess, whew, she's in the embodiment of divinity. She is the connection to the goddess. You know, she hears the goddess speak and she's able to tap in and tune in to that connection and that divinity to, to source and then serve, you know, serve humanity, serve the light, serve love. And I feel that I have been a priestess in many lifetimes. And I feel like that has really awoken in me 
at a time that I can really walk that path, like truly serve, knowing that, you know, yes, things are about me, you know, but they're not all about me. They're about the big picture, like honoring. One of my pet peeves is when people say it's not all about you. And the thing is, as it is, it's about each and every one of us. And that is really important. You know, when the plane is going to crash, you put the oxygen mask on yourself so that you can help the child. So that whole saying of it's not about you, it is. It's about each and every one of us, but it's also not just about us, right? It's not all about me. I am the microcosm of the macrocosm, and I'm here to channel that divinity so that then I can serve humanity. And I feel like if each and every one of us could do that, then world peace would be possible. Like if we were all looking after self and making it about us with the knowing that it's also about everyone, imagine the world we'd be living in. So the priestess is that oracle. It is that channel of what needs to come through and then also executing it and actually walking the walk talking the talk and doing, and I don't mean being perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a priestess, but it is about doing your best, you know, and it's about serving, serving humanity to bring more light, to bring more love, to bring more wisdom, to bring more truth. And yeah, the priestess really serves the goddess and you know, wearing the crown and sitting on the throne as the high priestess and having that staff. It's not about ruling over people. Like that is old paradigm. It's about staking your claim and owning your power and being strong, but then serving. And that's the new paradigm. Yeah, the new paradigm high priestess is knowing that power within, but not having power over, like knowing it's a circle and, and inviting everyone in to that, the power of love, the power of that's awakening within all of us, just really exciting. It certainly is. And I, I heard you mention the oracle in there. Would you like to just talk about the oracle now? What, yeah. what does the oracle mean to you? Yeah, this is, um, this is a big one. This is a big one, I think, for a lot of people. And I personally went back and forth, back and forth. Do I call myself a clairvoyant channel? Do I call myself an oracle? And I, and I went back and forth, back and forth, because to me, the oracle hold so much responsibility and so much weight and so much there's so much in it and i i ended up claiming it and saying no this is who i am and what i do um just because I've had, I've had so many premonitions and so many things that come through that it's more than just being a clairvoyant channel. Like I have actually seen and felt volcanoes on the earth erupting before they do. Like my husband and I were out to dinner and all of a sudden I just got sick. Like I was actually sick to my stomach started crying and my husband's like, are you okay? What's going on? I was like, I don't know. I just, I have to go to the bathroom. And then I went and I was just crying and I was like, oh my God, honey, so many people are going to die. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, oh my God, they were already dying. And I just like, really like, blah. And then, you know, and I said, honey, 
a volcano has just erupted and I, I, oh my God, you know, I can feel it. And he, you know, he's been married to me for a while now. So he's kind of gotten used to this kind of thing, but you know, the next day he said, honey, you're right. When you had that experience, that's exactly what had happened. And then he told me, you know, he was blown away. He was like, my God, how did you do that? Like, how did you? And I said, I don't know. And this has been, you know, it's not something that I can some like control, like I can't win the lottery with it or anything like that. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not like that, but I, I do have visions. I do have premonitions and I do have things that come through that have made me realize, you know, from being in Sunday school as a young girl in church, you know, the oracles and the Bible, they were the seers. They could see things and they could feel things and they were the guides. And so it's a big thing to claim, but I'm just being who I am and owning it finally. But whew, the responsibility is huge. Yeah. It's all so deeply ancient feminine gifting. Um, you know, the, the motifs of the inner motifs of the goddess, the inner motifs of the priestess, and the inner motifs of the, the oracle. And so this brings us to the redemption then yeah. of the feminine spirit and how you're experiencing that, Shaman. Yeah, that's such a big question. Um, from my experience, I feel that I have lived many lifetimes on planet Earth, and I've been here many times. And when I really claimed and came out of my cave of being a priestess and an oracle, I felt, I felt the past lives of persecution. I felt the judgment. I remembered being burned at the stake for being a witch. I remember the pain of being ostracized and removed from the tribe because of my gifts and because of who I am. And you know, this lifetime is not so different. You still get alienated, ostracized, persecuted for being different and made fun of, right? Who does she think she is? She's the priestess, she's an oracle, like, and you know, it, it, there's a lot that goes with that. And I think most of us wanna belong. You know, we wanna be part of the tribe. We don't wanna be pushed out because in, you know, in the past that could mean death. If you're kicked out of the tribe, you could die. So, you know, there is a lot of redemption of the feminine spirit because to really, truly, in my opinion, to go into that feminine energy is to come into our intuition. And I believe we all have that. I believe we all have the accessibility to develop our intuition. And that that is part of that feminine power and that feminine energy. But because of the patriarchal, you know, society and the patriarchal way of being, that has been shut down and that has been ridiculed. It has been laughed at. It's been mocked. It's like, oh, you and your woo-woo, right? Even that word, oh, oh, she's being so woo-woo. It's like pushing it down. And so it's my opinion that we need to awaken our intuition and we need to activate all of us, the men, the women, all walks of life, you know, the farmers in there, rain boots or their what are they, whatever they're called the you know the the big boots that they wear out on the farm and all of us all of us need to ignite 
our intuition and our feminine power. You know, um, I think we've reached a place in this existence where we really need, need, I'm going to say, not as a luxury, but need to get back in touch with the feminine and to embrace the feminine. I think it's of utmost importance. Beautiful. It's such an important message to share because that redemption can also be happening and you not knowing that it's happening. So one of the key things in the summit is to see that redemption being transmitted from all of the wonderful contributors. So do you want to speak a little bit about the summit now? Yeah, yeah. It's been incredible, absolutely incredible to hear all the different stories and all the different opinions and all the different voices. I think that's been, well, all of it's actually been very delightful, but it's been so incredible to hear all the different stories, all the different voices, all of the different activations of each and every speaker. You know, everyone has had something different to say, and I love that. I think it's really important that all voices are heard. All voices are important, and all voices are part of God, goddess, the universe, you know, and it's part of the awakening to know that all the voices are important. And, you know, that's my vision and my goal of the summit is to unite each and every one of us to awaken within for all walks of life, all religions, all spiritual thoughts. Um, yeah, to unite in love. To me, it's all about love, you know, and love, love is, whew, it's powerful. It's a powerful, powerful force that if we just allow it in, it can awaken and unite the world. Yes. Love is the great awakener. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Do we want to speak more about how you're experiencing this awakening? I mean, in terms of where you're sitting, as priestess and goddess and through what you're transmitting? Great question. Um, the awakening. I'll begin by sharing a story. Uh, at around 12 years old, my sister and I both had dreams about the end of the world. And we shared those dreams and we had them individually, separate to each other, but within the same week, I would have been about I think around 12 and she's three and a half years younger than me. So she was, she was quite young. And it's very interesting because her dream of the end of the world was fire and brimstone. And it was really quite scary. Um, and like not a pleasant place, like not, not a pleasant experience. And my end of the world dream was that I was alone and I looked up at the sky and I put my arms up and I went, oh, where has everyone gone? And then it started snowing and it was beautiful. And I remember just filling up with joy and happiness and it was so peaceful and everything was just you know, snow everywhere. And I just find it really interesting that, you know, now at 46 years old, I'm living in Sweden where, you know, and we're in lockdown and we're here by ourselves. So we're kind of alone and, and that I've come to the snow. And 
to me, I feel like that was in some ways like a premonition dream of the awakening to each and every one of us is going to be different and it's going to be unique to our individual awakening. So it's, it's a really big, vast question, but I do believe, you know, we are in very interesting times. And, you know, when I first started my awakening journey, um, well, many layers of awakening, many like an onion, you know, but like the big, big awakening was when I had a premonition dream that my father died and then he died the next day when I was 19. And that certainly woke me up. It woke me up into searching, like, who am I? Why did I dream that my father died and then he died? And why do I see ghosts? And why do I have all these experiences? And who am I? And all of that, you know. I feel like, you know, the apocalypse is now. Like, we're here, we're going through it, and we have been for a long time. And that awakening, it's, it's so hard to put into words. Oh my goodness. And I'm now feeling for all of the people I've interviewed. <laughs> It's because there's so much to say. I mean, I could write a whole book about the awakening. It's so interesting. The awakening is many things to me, but it's almost as if there was a dark room and then someone came in and turned on the lights and you thought the room was clean and tidy and now you can see the dust, the dust and the cobwebs and all the things that need to be cleaned up. And so the great awakening is not always pleasant, but in order to change, we need to be able to see what's in the room. And, you know, that's, that's part of the awakening. It's like, ah, people say, everything is inside you, you know, everything. And yes, that's true. However, we need each other. You know, we all have blind spots. We all have things that we don't see that other people can. And mm -hmm. so the awakening to me as well is awakening to the connections that we have with humanity and remembering that, yes, we are a spark of the universe and that we are God, goddess, Allah, spirit, like we are all of that but that we're also human in these human bodies connecting and learning and getting in touch with our shadow and our stuff that needs to be cleaned up, you know? And so the awakening is not always pleasant, but the awakening is also joyful in the sense that you know, when you clean up that room, you get to enjoy <laughs> how beautiful that room is. And it's our temple. And each and every one of us have, I feel, have that responsibility of doing as much awakening as we can. And, you know, we could just accept things as they are, but then. What is the future of that? I don't see that it's sustainable. And so I feel that M Mother Gaia and the universe and the cosmos is shining that light on all of us. And like we are actually being blasted with light. <laughs> like that, the science scientists know that, that we have been blasted with light. And so we all need to wake up you know, and become responsible for this beautiful planet that we're living on. And yeah, so yeah, I know, big, big question, isn't it? Oh, but oh, back to my dream. Like, some of us will be thriving right now. Some of us will be dancing and joyful and happy and having the most amazing awakening 
process and journey. And some of us are really struggling and being hit hard. And some of us, it's a little bit of both, you know? And so it's really all over the show. It's, it's uh, you know, when that light, like how, how clean is your room? What do you need to do? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so the, the, um, the message started coming through your message for humanity. I could hear it coming through just then as you spoke about the awakening. So if you have a message for humanity, what would that be, Shannon? My message for humanity is do your best and be okay if it's not good enough. Like, I think for me, when I woke up and I realized my responsibility, you know, to my carbon footprint, to my fellow humans, to the animals, to the earth, I felt this weight on my shoulders and it paralyzed me, you know, to the point where then I didn't know what to do or how I could do it. And then it became too much. I also became an overachiever. I still am <laughs> to, you know, this urgency of, oh my goodness, we've got to save the earth. We've got to save the animals. We've got to save humanity. Oh my goodness. You know, this mission is so big. Ah, and then I, I got spun out and I don't want people to be complacent and go, oh, the earth will look after herself, la, 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 you know, everything will be all right and then just not do anything because that's what we did in the 70s right everybody got stoned and checked out and peace love happiness and then you know it kind of like it started there there was a movement that started and then everyone just kind of like i don't know <laughs> ate pizza you know <laughs> like it it we did that it didn't work you know and so it's time to get back to our core, to our center, to our purpose. And each one of us has a purpose. Each one of us has a unique brand of magic to share with the world for humanity. And so remembering that it's the weight of the world is not on your shoulders. It's about doing what you can do, you know, for me, it was this vision of the summit and then bringing all these amazing people together, you know, as like a lifeline to humans in the world that need this activation. And so I feel like I'm doing my part by doing the summit, but you might have something else that you can do and contribute to humanity that is specific to your dream and your heart. And so, you know, it can be as small as smiling at someone on the bus. It can be as small as just being, being kind, because actually that's not small, it's huge. And you never know the impact that you have by just being kind. And I'm starting to cry because someone told me this story about how they smiled at someone on the bus and the person on the bus later, like a long time later, came back and said, that smile and you being kind mm. to me saved mm. my life because I was mm. going to end it all. But because mm. of your smile and your kindness, it gave me hope to be part of humanity. So, you know, don't underestimate the power that's within you and your contribution. And, you know, every single one of us has something, some spark, some gift, some superpower, something to bring to this world. And that each and every one of you is unique like a snowflake. There's not another one of you. And we need all the drops in the ocean to make the ocean. So without your drop, we would not have the ocean. So I want to say to humanity to do your part, like do your part, 
but also make sure that you're not doing everyone's part, right? Because we all, we all actually do need each other. And that's another thing I want to say is I used to be so independent and think that I didn't need anyone. Like I am sovereign in my own being. And as, as much as that is important, it is also important that we have family, that we have tribe, that we have connections. So get the support you need. Like if you're depressed, you're sad, you're upset, reach out, reach out for mm -hmm. a lifeline. You know, the, the summit is full of, I think there's 30, I've lost count, 32, 33 of us of amazing healers, therapists, transformational uh, coaches, and, you know, reach out to one of them, you know, and get the support that you need. Start a woman's circle, start a men's circle. Like, let's keep connecting in with each other's hearts. And yeah. Thank you so much for the message. Yeah, my message is you are not alone. You are not alone. You also have all your angels, your guardians, your guides, your spirit animals, your ancestors to connect in with. That was, that's been really helpful for me too, especially during lockdown. You know, I guess that's my other message mm -hmm. is that you don't need to be an oracle or a psychic channel or psychic medium, clairvoyant channel. You don't need to be any of those things in order to connect in with your spirit guides, with your connection. And I urge everyone to really, you know, connect in, connect in with your roots, connect in with your God, your goddess, your awakening within and get out in nature, hug trees, spend time by the ocean, by the lake, by the rivers and the streams and really connect in with yourself and your own connection. Perfect. It's such an incredible invitation, uh, done with so much love. And I, I hear the message of kindness being the radical thing, the radical act, the compassion now being the radical act. Really beautiful, uh, that clarity you bring to us there. Yeah. And I would just like to say that with all our love uh, and with the intention and from all of the contributors uh, that those acts of kindness uh, the time that they took to show up here may this go forward and bless the planet mm -hmm. and um, also thank you for arranging this platform for our brothers and sisters to connect to the healers and the visionaries and the transformational leaders. Uh, so important that you've set up this bridge and we appreciate, thank you for the service. Please stay. You're welcome. Yeah, my absolute honor. Yeah, the world needs all of our magic. That was the other thing is stay connected to magic. You know, when you believe in magic, magic believes in you. And I firmly believe that my life is so magical because I make it so. <laughs> yeah. And so it is. <laughs> yeah. And so it is. So it is. It's an amazing, wonderful, wonderful life. And yeah, enjoy the ride. Enjoy this incredible experience. If you think about it, we're living in these human bodies as this planet, this green blue planet travels through the universe. How cosmic is that? Like that's <laughs> magic. <laughs> Mother Earth gives us so much, so much mm. life, so much love, so much support. Mm. I mean, there's crystals inside of her. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And, you know, yeah. Okay. One last final message to humanity is have fun like that. I believe being connected to your joy mm. is so important, you know, spirituality, connection, learning. It should be fun. Like it should, it should stir kindness, compassion, joy, love. Um, and if it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know if I would want to do it. Like when I meditate and I connect, I can feel the love. I can feel the connection. It feels good. It gives me energy. So I recommend each and every one of you to connect in with what awakens you, what brings you joy, brings you connection. You know, I, I remember my third eye opening when I was snowboarding. Snowboarding can be such a spiritual journey, different things for different people. Some people meditate, some people find their meditation while they're swimming under the water with the turtles. So find your joy. And when you have joy, it boosts the immune system as well. And that's what we're all needing at the moment, aren't we? Mm. So true, Ashe, so true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh my goodness, I think I have so many messages for humanity. <laughs> one last one is like, I feel that this pandemic is happening for a reason. I believe everything happens for a reason. And pay attention to what it awakens inside of you. Pay attention to what it stirs up inside of you. Like if it's fear that it brings up, pay attention to that fear, feel into it, listen to the message it has for you and don't push that away. I think it's really, again, the femininity is about the awakening within and then listening to that awakening and listening to what it needs to say. Yeah. I think that's me. <laughs> All right. We were just waiting. We were just waiting to make sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that treasure chest. Um, for all the jewels of this whole entire summit process. Yeah. You're welcome, Rose. And thank you so much for interviewing me <laughs> and holding space. Yeah. A such treasure. a treasure, such a treasure. Yeah. That, um, you know, that, that, that going within and acknowledging our feelings is part of <clears throat> really honoring the goddess, honoring the feminine, honoring the body, honoring the temple. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, my feeling with the patriarchal energy is that Part of it has been the pushing away of the emotions, of the sensitivities, of the feelings, pushing that away at our demise, right? And so now it's time to, and sometimes it's painful and sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's uncomfortable, but making peace with all of those feelings and all of those parts. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I just want to invite everyone actually to place one heart, one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. I'm just taking a moment to honor your you and your journey and your voice and your vision. And honoring the awakening within you, knowing that all voices are important. All voices need to be heard.
Let's take a moment to really honor you and know that every drop in the ocean makes the ocean. And your drop is important. You are a spark of divinity. You matter, you are important, and you are love. Thank you so much for being part of this summit. Namaste. Namaste, Krishna.